So there's been a lot of talk in the last couple of days about Liberty Global's buyout of Virgin. Um, do you think this deal kind of paves the way for bigger deals to be done? now in the coming years? No question. I think uh, Liberty in particular seems to scale new heights every time they do a new acquisition. Um, but this one is an absolutely seminal moment, I think, for the financing markets in general, but also cable specifically. So uh, the amount of debt that was raised in this transaction was circa 10 billion US dollar equivalent. And um, it is a watershed moment because if you look at the transactions, the size of, of M&A deals that have been financed in the non-investment grade space since the crisis began, uh, previously the, the next largest deal was about 5.8 billion. So uh, to take it from 5.8 to actual funded debt of 8 billion is, is, a, is a real uh, incremental step forward in terms of what the art of the possible is. So, so what do you think about the timing of the deal? Why did it make sense to do that now? now? Um, well, I think from Liberty's point of view, um, all things were lining up. So you have incredibly constructive markets. So from a financing standpoint, the cost of capital is extremely attractive. And then uh, obviously the sun, moon, and stars aligned from a strategic standpoint. And you know they were able to, uh, to strike a very attractive deal with, with Virgin. And um, you know, if you think about it, um, you know, I th the regulatory environment also, I believe, is now receptive to the concept of cable consolidation and what the industrial logic means. So all those pieces had to line up to make it happen, but in particular, I think the financing markets were a big piece of it. So do you anticipate more consolidation in the UK market now for like the coming year or coming next couple of years? Mm -hmm. Well, in terms of consolidation, UK specifically, um, you know, there aren't that many chess pieces to move around in the media and telecom space, although there's clearly a lot of discussion about a large financing for everything everywhere. Uh, you did see a very small acquisition on the part of, um, uh, you know, on, uh, in response, I think, in some respects, from on the part of Sky um, with their most recent acquisition. So yes, anytime you have a large transformational acquisition that takes place in a market, it does, I think, beget other, you know, uh, activity because people need to then reposition themselves to uh, to determine where they want to fit in the pecking order. So I would expect to see that. But more broadly, I also think with the advent of being able to do a large deal like this, it makes people dust off the shelf of, of the art of the possible. So things that might not have been able to be done six or nine months ago, maybe people are taking another look at those files. Okay. And, and in terms of IPOs, um, last year we saw Ziggo raise 1.1 billion. Um, do you think um, we're going to see more of that kind of activity? Sure. So vis-a-vis -vis the IPO market, first of all, um, we're reaching a point in the cycle where I think investors on, on the buy side are looking to take more risk. And so anytime you see the mindset shift to add risk to a portfolio, that means that they start to look into the equity markets. And we're seeing a massive upswing in terms of the new issue volumes on the equity side. And um, and so when you have those receptive markets, once again, you know, the art of the possible in terms of flotations and performing flotations, you know, gets back on the table. So the pipeline of IPOs is increasing. I see it in my own businesses now. And in particular, what you have are financial sponsor or private equity firms who have um, made investments over the last you know, five, seven years, and they've been looking for opportunities to monetize those investments. And now with receptive markets, I think you're going to see a lot of that sponsor monetization activity come to the forefront. So, I mean, uh, do you think that existing private equity owners are kind of looking to exit more? Is that, is that the yes, trend? Yes, yeah, thematically, absolutely. So, you know, they have defined time horizons. They've got funds. Those funds have very um, significant return expectations. And there are multiple ways that you can monetize. You can sell your assets, you can recapitalize them, or you can float them. And again, with these constructive equity markets, which we really haven't seen in any way, shape, and form of any materiality since the crisis, that's now surfacing. So that's another one of those opportunities that I'm sure the sponsors are going to take advantage of if they can. So just in a kind of general sense, I mean, how do you think the market looks today compared to like post-crash, and, and how do you see that kind of developing in the next year? It's night and day. So post-crash, you know, there was a question mark whether anything could get financed. And um, in early 2009 was the first first uh, acquisition finance that had been done and frankly we opened the market actually with just a refinancing for UPC, the Liberty subsidiary, and then later that year we did the first acquisition financing that had been done. But back then we were talking about sizes which were a fraction of what we're able to do today. So uh, it truly is night and day. So you had no equity market, you had a nascent or a very fragile debt market, and now all markets are open and as I say anything's possible. So I'm pretty enthusiastic actually uh, about you know what we're seeing ahead of us.